My name is Fatima Esker. This poem is called McDonald's. The glowing yellow M, beacon to those who stole passage through war, planning documents through skies studded with bullets. Our new Lady Liberty, Empire State. How we saved over months, arriving at the fortress donned in our best attempt at American. Handmade velvet frocks for my sisters and me, matching barrettes to tame our wild curls. A crisp suit for my uncle, my aunt's fresh pressed shalvar knees, a glittered billow of fabric in the pavemented parking lot. All five of us sat in the playpen before ordering, too nervous to throw plastic balls, settled for a polite trip down the slide. We could only eat one item on the menu, filet of fish and white cream tartar sauce, each bite chewed as slow as the moment we sat before the immigration officers at the embassy, waiting to see if we had fooled them. Hi, my name is uh, Nate Marshall. I'm from the south side of Chicago and I'm a part of the Dark Noise Collective and this poem is called On Caskets, after Suji Kwakyo. One, decorating the dead is among the most basic human instincts, to return the borrowed body and acknowledge earth as maker and home. Neanderthals used antlers and flowers. Egyptians had pyramids with peasants buried in the walls they built. Some niggas just get a pine box. Hopefully, you get a hole or a flame. Some only get a cold cabinet in the morgue until somebody or nobody claims them as a loss. Two, a permanent fixture on my to-do list is research life insurance plans. Pick a good one with a fair rate and enough money to buy a nice box. Three, everything gone. Be all right this morning. And I contemplate the implications of the statement for the night. Everything in Mississippi is too cruel to bury. I wonder what that means if every body in Chicago has red clay in its lineage. Chief Keefe must know in his bones ball like it's no tomorrow from what muddy time capsuled into the south side ground. Four, when grandma died, she left mama a notepad with instructions. The one I remember was, get the casket you want, what you like, don't be pressured. We wore blue at the service. We matched the box and its glossy painted ribbons, gold flecked and light. Five, house slaves are responsible for preparing the dead of the master's house. They clean and clothe, they dig the hole, they don't bury any black body, really, only dispose. One of the concessions won by slave riots was the right to a funeral. White folk were confused at how the Africans sometimes wore white, smiled, shouted like joy. They seemed funerals, not home goings. Six, my mother used to say my father loved funerals. He worked graveyard shift and spent the days and weekends visiting bodies, running his finger alongside the box and signing the greeting book. The most decent thing you can do is visit the funeral of someone you didn't know for someone you do. Sister's co-worker, lover's friend, accountant's mother, your aunt's high school rival. Seven. Black churches formed burial societies after slavery. Every week, you chipped off a piece of your pay to save for the shovel and the rough hands that would lower you. I know some black folk now buying their plot foot by foot, saving for a final mortgage. Eight, it is Dia de los Muertos, and I have a check folded in between the pages of a book about genocide. I will send the money next week to the other side of my family and help bury grandma's sister. Nine, 
I can't think of a black rapper who hasn't contemplated their own death on record. Ready to die, life after death, death is certain, do or die, get rich or die trying, death certificate. This is natural, all my verses mention boxes or holes. 10. Once we lay this brother down in the ground, we got work to do. When I was a young boy, at the age of five, my mama said I'm gonna be the greatest man alive. These children don't expect to live past 30. They come to these funerals and they represent. They put themselves in the place of the person in the casket. Krista Franklin, Manifesto or Ars Poetica number two. Give me the night, you beasts hissing over the face of this dead woman, I climb into your eyes looking. To those who would sleep through the wounds they inflict on others, I offer pain to help them awaken. Juju, Tom Toms, and the magic of a talking burning bush. I am the queen of sleight of hand, wandering the forest of motives, armed with horoscopes, cosmic encounters, and an exacto knife. My right eye is a projector flickering hot and tot and Huey Newton. My left eye is prism of wild style, gold grills, low riders, black dahlias, blunts, and back alleys. At 21, I stood at the crossroad of hell and here, evil peering at me behind a blue red eye. I armed myself with the memories of Pentecostal tent revivals, apple orchards, the strawberry field I roamed with my mother and aunt in the summer, and the sightings of UFO lights blinking in the black of an Ohio night sky. I am a weapon. I believe in hoodoo, voodoo, root workers, dead presidents, black tail, black inches, and banshees. I believe in the ghosts of 60 million or more and black bones disintegrating at the bottom of the Atlantic, below sea level, not just knee deep. I believe that children are the future. Love them now or meet them at dusk at your doorstep. A nine millimeter in their right hand and a head noisy as a hornet's nest later. Your choice. Black, still, in the hour of chaos. I believe in royal crown, Afrosheen, Vaseline, Jergens, and baby powder on breasts. The collective conscious, cellular memory, public enemies, outlaws, outcasts, elevations, elevators, and Encyclopedia Britannica. Under my knife, El Haj Malik El Shabazz laughs with Muhammad Ali. A lady named Day cuddles with a boxer named Mister after traumatically stumbling on strange fruit dangling from one of the most beautiful sycamores ever. Under my knife, Marilyn Monroe enjoys an evening out with Ella Fitzgerald. Meanwhile, life shows me a gigantic photo. I am a weapon. I chart voyages of unlove, high on a man called crazy who turns nigger into prince. I believe in Zhang, Clifton, Dirty Diana, and Della, paper, Skrilla, green, gumbo, coins, Bati boys, and video vixens. I believe that beads at the ends of braids, percussive instruments, in double dutch. In the reflection of my knife, Cap Calloway, Duke Ellington, and Thelonious Monk argue in a Basquiat heroin nod, I am a weapon. I believe in goo gobs of deep brown apple butter, alphabets, alaga syrup, Afrolachians, assalamu alaikum, walaikum assalam, and African Hebrew Israelites. I believe in octoroons, quadroons, coloreds, coolie high, commodores, crumpin, crunk, and burn, Hollywood burn. I am Setha, crawling the field toward freedom with a white girl talking about velvet. I believe in tumbleweaves, hot combs and hair lies, Shaka Zulu, Mau Mau Slum Village, and Balloon Mind State. Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. I believe in water. My body is pulp. I bleed ink. I believe in the fantastic volume two. Low end theory. Space is the place and the hissing of summer lawns. Tucked in the corner of my right ventricle sprouts a tree of knowledge, lives a shining serpent and a middle finger. I am on the quest for the marvelous. My face is a mask of malehood, malevolence, one big masquerade. Metaphysically niggerish, I am a weapon, wandering the forest of motives, a machete in one hand, a mirror in the other, searching for the nearest body of water. Mm -hmm.